I was as shocked as I could have been with any other name or any other colleague. Uh, I was just very sorry for him. The media coverage about the, the incident very often makes you angry because these statements are taken out of context. And what more do we know about this Swiss controller at the center of the investigation? He was chased by the media. He was accused of being a murderer. He's the man, obviously, everyone wants to talk to, but at the moment, the Swiss say he's in no position to talk. And we heard today that the Swiss authorities have opened an investigation to see whether there's enough evidence for charges of manslaughter. And an investigation is underway, headed by Germany's air crash detectives, the BFU. By the fifth day, all the black boxes have been examined. So this is a typical voice recorder which was built into the Tupolev 154. It shows two reels. The recording time of this recorder is uh, 30 minutes. And this is rather solid, but the original voice recorder of the Tupolev was heavily damaged. So we had to remove the tape and replay it on such a specialized tape recorder. This is the hangar where wreckage of the planes was examined. This one here, is the lower surface of the right wing of the Tupolev. And that remaining stub here went below the Tupolev and caused these scratches. July 2003. Many parents returned to Überlingen, Germany for the first anniversary. The Germans built a memorial on the site of the tragedy, made of a series of giant silver pearls on a broken necklace. The CEO of Skyguide is among the crowd. Can you tell us, what are the mistakes you made? I don't think this is the time to talk about it. I'm sure you'll understand. Have you apologized? Okay. Thank you. Among the parents is Vitaly Kaloyev, who asks the head of Skyguide which controller was responsible for the accident, but receives no answer. Yes, in fact, the man asked if it is possible to meet the controller, to meet Peter, and uh, the answer was it is not possible. The request passes almost unnoticed, but Vitali isn't satisfied. Defend crossing. Meanwhile, Defend. investigators Defend. discover a fog crossing. of confusion Defend. surrounding TCAS. When it was introduced over 20 years ago, there'd been a fatal omission. Descend flight level 350. Expedite. I have no one determined what should happen if there was a conflict between what TCAS and the controller climb. were saying. Climb. It says climb. There Descend is no hard and fast five, rule to guide the pilots. He is guiding us down. Increase descent. While Increase pilots in the descent. West have always been taught to obey TCAS, TCAS descent. in the rest descent. of the world, it's anyone's guess. We're not accustomed to not trusting controllers. In civil aviation, there were lots of situations when pilots didn't follow instructions of the controller, and that led to plane crashes or other accidents. The mentality of, of Russians is still very much in the lines of the old Soviet ways, and they're much more inclined to follow instructions than to do what they think may be appropriate. They always reckon that the other guy knows better. The potential for a terrible accident was there, and it nearly happened a year and a half before the Uberlingen tragedy. Two jumbo jets over Japan, with 677 people on board, came so close that they filled each other's windscreens. The violent avoidance maneuver caused 100 people to be injured, some of them seriously. This could have been a devastating plane crash because once again, a pilot listened to the controller instead of his TCAS. 
It should have served as a warning to everyone. Yet, there was only silence from ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, who's responsible for the rules of commercial aviation. German investigators say that their vagueness about how to use TCAS was one of the reasons for the Überlangen disaster. If ICAO had carried out a detailed investigation of the incident in Japan and made recommendations that led to changes in procedures, this probably would not have happened. ICAO did not feel it necessary to get involved in this, and they left it entirely up to the Japanese authorities. Had it been a collision, maybe they would have got involved. After this near miss, the Japanese government immediately asked for their guidance. But unfortunately, ICAO didn't act on the request until 18 months later, after the Überlingen disaster. Perhaps the ICAO procedures and standards, but in particular operating procedures for airborne collision avoidance, were somewhat ambiguous or open to interpretation. The Japanese incident wasn't the only warning ICAO received. In the years leading up to the Umberlingen collision, other near misses happened because one set of pilots obeyed air traffic control instead of their TCAS. If I have to summarize the advice that we gave the world, if a warning comes from ACAS, pilots should immediately follow it at all times. With the benefit of hindsight, you always ask yourself, could we have done more? And an accident is a wake-up call for everybody. All of these regrets are of little comfort to the grieving parents of Ufa. Everything that was good is in the past and was connected with my child. All the hopes, dreams were connected with him, with his future. And now, nothing left. At least I've got nothing left. So the right way to put it is, my life didn't change. It stopped. Our pain doesn't go away, you know. It's getting stronger every year. It's getting harder to live. At first, we had a hope that she'd come back, that time would pass and things would fall into right places. And now the hope is gone. And the worst thing is, is that the kids were flying happy. Healthy kids were going on a vacation. And some grown-up people made a mistake, made a fatal mistake and the kids were gone. She was loved. She was very kind, gentle. She was the beloved daughter. Beloved daughter. Vitaly Kaloyev, the Russian architect, has lost his entire family, and he has fallen to pieces. Obsessed with finding out who's responsible for the collision, Kaloyev travels to Zurich to play out the last tragic chapter in the Uberlingen story.